Religion plays an important role in many human lives. For many, it is an entire basis for the structure of their lives. This would include their beliefs, practices, laws, culture, and history. However, many religions around the world tend to be misunderstood and placed in a stereotype. One such religion would be Islam. Islam is prominent in many nations and has become noticed politically around the world. In order for these stereotypes to be avoided, you must first have a strong understanding of the meaning of Islam, its overall beliefs, its history, and also the comparison of its sects, of Sunni and Shia. It is important to have an understanding of Islamic term meanings and the significance of Islam's holy book, the Quran. Islam is a monotheistic religion, meaning the worship of only one God, which is referred to as Allah. The word Islam literally means submission to God. A follower of Islam is called a Muslim, similar to how a follower of Judaism is a Jew and of Christianity is a Christian. Muslim means one who surrenders or submits to the will of God. Quran, the holy book, is derived from the Arabic word Qara. Qara means the act of reciting. The Quran is crucial to the Muslim belief because it is believed to be of the words and teachings of their most revered prophet, Muhammad. Belief in prophets is an important part of Islam. Islamic prophets are viewed as human with human characteristics. However, it is believed that many are blessed with inhuman-like gifts, such as performing miracles. Related to this idea is the term an-nabi, which is knowledge granted to prophets by God. This knowledge may include information about certain future events or possibly of past events which are unknown to people. Islam is one of the three Abrahamic religions along with Judaism and Christianity. Muslims view Abraham as a prophet. They see him as the father of Islam. Islam differs in the sense that they view Abraham as an ancestor to Muhammad a prophet that is not recognized in other Abrahamic religions. Moses is also a prophet recognized by Islam, similar to other Abrahamic religions. However, they believe he was a great man that lived a life similar to Muhammad. Muslims recognize Jesus as a great man and a great prophet. They praise Jesus but do not believe he was above human, just the same as other prophets. Also, they do not believe he was the Son of God, which is a strong belief in Christianity. Above all, Muslims worship Muhammad as the greatest prophet to walk the earth. They view his life as the perfect example of a righteous Muslim life. They strive to follow his example by following the Quran, which is believed to be the recordings of Muhammad's words and teachings. Many of the practices that make up an active Muslim are included in the five pillars of Islam. The pillars are acts of worship, which are to be completed to show you are a dedicated Muslim. The first pillar is Shahada. This is where you claim that you will only worship the one and only God, Allah, and that you accept Muhammad as the messenger of God. The second pillar is Salah, basically meaning ritual prayer that is performed five times a day facing towards Mecca. The third pillar is Zakat, which is giving alms to the poor. This is only meant accordingly for those who can afford it, but mostly as a way to help the spread of Islam. The fourth pillar is Psalm, which includes three different types of fasting. The fifth pillar is the Hajj, the Hajj is a pilgrimage to the holy Islamic city of Mecca. You are to make this pilgrimage at least once in your lifetime if you are financially and physically able to do so. The Hajj's importance lies in its allowing the believer to approach the center of the world as well as the place where the Quran's divine revelations began and continued for about 12 years. The performer of Hajj does not only reenact Muhammad's ritual, he or she also recalls acts of important people in Muslim history. The rituals performed around the Kaaba reenacts when Prophet Abraham and Ishmael transformed the Kaaba into the sacred place of worship and peace.
In spite of some physical hardships, pilgrims who complete the Hajj consider it one of the greatest spiritual experiences of their lives. Many Muslims regard the Hajj as one of the great achievements of civilization because it brings together people from around the world and focuses them upon a single goal. A believer is required to make the pilgrimage at least once in his or her lifetime. Another debatable practice of Islam is jihad. Jihad means to strive or struggle in the way of God. Some Sunni Muslims view jihad as the sixth pillar of Islam. However, most Muslims view jihad as simply either an inner or outer struggle. As an inner struggle, Muslims are putting forth their energy towards being spiritually perfect through their inner self. The outer struggle is debated as the protection or expansion of Islamic beliefs. There is controversy over whether this physical aspect of jihad has become evident in the world through events such as 9-11, where a group of Muslim terrorists use force as a method to resist others who do not follow Islamic beliefs. Differing from typical Islamic beliefs is the approach of Sufism. This approach appeals to more to the spiritual parts of Islamic religion. It is an ascetic belief where intuition and mysticism are emphasized in order to have direct contact with God. These beliefs are controversial with typical Islamic customs and laws, but Sufis believe that the ultimate experience with God is achieved through these practices. An example would be a group known as the Sufi whirling dervishes, who spin in circles in order to reach a different state of mind. Laws and culture of many Islamic communities are strongly influenced by the Quran. Slavery is mentioned several times in the Quran. Under the Quran, it is stated that slavery is an acceptable institution. The Quran also lays out the rights of slaves, which are very limited. Muhammad was even known to have owned a few slaves. However, the Quran encouraged the freeing of slaves, but does not command it. Muhammad and several of his followers freed slaves in their lifetimes, but did not feel slavery needed to be abolished. Slavery has persisted in Islamic communities throughout history, finally slowing in the 19th century. Problems exist today in several Middle East and East African nations on whether or not slavery is still being practiced in their Islamic communities. The Quran also has many other influences on Islamic culture. Diets are restricted in many ways. For example, under the Quran, Muslims are not to eat pork or slaughter an animal unless it is an herbivore. The Quran addresses women's rights and the equality between men and women. However, these equalities mostly extend to equal practices of prayer and equality in eternity after life. When it comes to marriage, property, and religious leadership, men and women tend to be very unequal under Islamic law. A man may marry many women if he is able to treat them all equally. But a woman is only allowed to marry one man. If a woman wants to divorce a man, the divorce cannot take place only by the woman's request, but by mutual agreement between both the man and woman. Traditionally, women in Islamic communities had similar property rights compared to men. However, as these nations are modernizing, women's property rights have declined. Women's rights are restricted in many other ways, such as clothing. The Quran states that women should be extensively concealed because they are holy. This is evident in today's Islamic communities as most women wear veils to cover their faces. 
The history of Islam is believed to be dated back to the creation of the world. In turn, God blessed the earth with several prophets to spread the beliefs of Islam. However, the most revered messenger of God was the prophet Muhammad. It was during Muhammad's lifetime that a majority of Islamic history would begin and take place. It was Muhammad's influence that changed Arab society from polytheistic to monotheistic. Before the presence of Muhammad, Arab societies believed that God entrusted his powers to many other gods and goddesses. These people are also historically known to be nomadic people of very low social structure. Muhammad's example of honesty and trustworthiness had a large impact on the nomadic people. Muslim belief says that at age 40, Muhammad received revelations from God while sitting on Mount Hera. He received this message from the angel Gabriel, who provided him with what is now known as the first five verses. These revelations basically advised Muhammad to read and proclaim it the name of the one and only Lord. This would mark the beginning of the spread of monotheistic beliefs in Arab societies. Not only did Muhammad's life have a large impact on society, but also his departure, which would be the beginning of the two major sects of Islam. When Muhammad died at the age of 63, a successor had to be chosen to be the new Islamic leader. This decision sparked a large debate over whether the next leader should be of his bloodline or one who follows his example and customs most definitely. Eventually, a group of powerful community leaders selected a man named Abu Bakr, a close companion to Muhammad, as the first caliph or successor. Those who agreed with and accepted this decision became known as a sect called Sunnis. Sunni is derived from the term Sunnah, meaning followers of custom, as towards the customs of Muhammad. Some Muslims were outraged with this decision and felt that Ali ibn Abi Talib, Muhammad's son-in-law, should have been selected as the first caliph. Ali was of bloodline and his supporters became known as Shiites. Shia is derived from the term Shiat, which means supporter or helper. This is directed towards Ali, whom they believed was a true successor. The Shiites would continue to feel this way as the second and third caliphs were selected. They felt strongly towards the idea of bloodline and would eventually go to the extent of violence to stand up for their beliefs. In 656 AD, the Shiites killed the third caliph and made Ali the new caliph. Violent resistance proved to be true of the Sunnis also, as they assassinated Ali five years later in the year 661 AD. Ali's two sons were also killed later in battles against supports of the Sunni caliph. Following these conflicts preceding Muhammad's succession, Sunnis decide that succeeding leaders, or Imams, should be selected by the community rather than by the most powerful of the community. Sunnis eventually drop the term Caliph and simply call their leader Imam. Shiites remained a minority of the Muslim population, but have persisted to the present day. The Shiite movement following the controversy of the first three caliphs initially spread to countries such as Iraq, Iran, and a few of Central and South Asia. Today, Sunnis are the majority of the Muslim population, while Shiites are only about 10 to 15 percent. Iraq and Iran happen to be rare cases today where there is a higher presence of Shiite Muslims as compared to Sunnis. Sunnis and Shiites today have a large impact on society and carry many stereotypes. Sunnis tend to dominate politics in Islamic countries. For example, Saddam Hussein was the leader of Iraq as a Sunni even though it is a Shiite nation. Western culture nations such as the United States have built strong stereotypes based on the impressions of powerful and popular Islamic leaders.